Tracy, that was a wonderful tasting of all your wines going back to the very first vintage of 2014. Tell me a bit more about the Mayo Camusé approach to making Pinot Noir here in Oregon. Absolutely. Um, it's a fascinating endeavor for me because I was trained in the New World. Um, and I think New World winemaking is phenomenal, but can tend to focus on flavor. So there's a lot of talk about, you know, picking when they, the fruits have cherry flavor or, um, you know, avoiding pomegranate or really progressing to these different fruit characteristics. The feeling that I've gotten from the beginning of old world wine making is about texture, right? And creating density and texture in the wine. And it's a very different orientation for looking at the wine and it carries through to everything that we do. Um, you know, at Mayo Camazé and this burgundy orientation, every grape is precious. Um, and I think in the new world, we have a plethora of land, we have vineyards everywhere, and so there isn't that same focus. And so it starts for us really in the vineyard. We have what we call vine to that, sort of as a philosophy. So we want every cluster that comes off the vine, when it gets to the winery, to look exactly the way it looked when it was on the vine. We want those berries to be whole, we want that process to be gentle. And so that involves us being at the vineyard to manage bucket control, to make sure that all the fruit is gently placed into the bin. We're picking into eighth ton cherry bins, so really short squatty bins, and we're actually gently putting the fruit in and only filling it to two layers. Um, and that ensures that there's not a lot of breakage and sort of compaction during the trip here. Um, we've usually got between eight and 15 people on the sorting line, depending on the vintage. Um, and we have a state of the art to stammer, so really trying to keep, again, whole berries when we go into that. And then because we're, we're low intervention, right, we're not adding anything to the wines, for us it's really about that cap management and that process during fermentation. So instead of doing punch downs, breaking up those berries early on, really trying to um, open up that primary fruit, we're working with all very gentle punch or pump overs from the beginning um, through cold soak about five to seven days, native fermentation, so allowing things to warm up naturally, and then typically between one and three pump overs a day, depending on the lot. I feel like we now, after so many years, we know our vineyards well enough to know that this Bishop Creek lot needs one pump over, whereas this La Colina lot needs three, because we're looking for more extraction there. Um, but really fine-tuning into what kind of extraction we're getting and then what that's going to translate to as far as texture and weight on the palate. Um, towards the end of fermentation, we're starting to do more pajage, so very gentle punch downs to break open any remaining fruit and whole berries. And at that point, we're increasing the temperature, which is allowing those tannins to polymerize and really wrap around the palate. And you see that when you're tasting every day and tasting twice a day, you see that uh, progression really clearly. Um, and I think that those features uh, create a wine with length and tension um, and really beautiful tannin structure that can carry the wine and creates more complexity in the glass. So it's not just that primary fruit, there's so many different layers um, and qualities to the wine. 